from downtown Atlanta, Georgia. Seven seed Everline Drive taking on number one seed challenge ALS for the final slot in the semis on the line and a $2 million prize to the winner. 72 teams started this single elimination brings us down now to the final five of them. Overseas Elite Golden Eagles will meet one semifinal August 2nd. Team Fredette will await the winner of this one to see who they play Thursday night in Charm City in the championship Friday night on ESPN. We've had some incredible drama here today. Kyle Fogg, two-time MVP for a program that has never lost in this thing, provided the game winner, game number one. Travis Diener from downtown, game winner for the Marquette guys. They knocked off Bayheim's army in game number two. And then Jimmer, straight Jimmer, Jared Sullinger, a nutmeg to lead the break. Fredette ended with an assist. And Team Fredette cruised over Scarlet and Gray to reserve their spot in the uh, semifinals. Tom Hart, welcome, Dan Doc. He's so anxious with us. to get the game started. <laughs> wants to watch the floor. You want to watch the floor with these teams because we've got a lot of NBA guys out there. You talk about NBA guys, you know, you're talking about Evelyn uh, Drive. They've got four guys that played in the NBA. They would be a really good G League team and win games, and they have guys that can not only do that, but contribute. Uh, Jeremy Evans, he is a stone-cold, running, jumping athlete. The guy won the NBA slam dunk contest. His impact is more on the defensive end of the court and on the glass. You know, you can Ladies shuffle players and on and off the roster at this point. One guy that's missing today is James Western Michael McAdoo. He was in action for him two days ago. They expect him to return when they get to Baltimore. But that's a big loss because he was a key player for him last year. I thought he was really good. I thought he was a really good teammate. I thought he scored. He passed it. He was really good inside, dropping it off uh, to the opposite big. That is a very big loss because, let's face it, we thought that Everland Drive was the best athletic team, most athletic team in this event. And now they lost a good one. Oh, you want to see chemistry, too. Speaking of chemistry, they got a great point guard on the other side. That's Jerome Randall, former Pac-10 player of the year. He lit it up the other night. We're going to see great guard play on both sides. I think Jerome Randall is the most important player for your blue drive. You're talking about a guy that dominates the ball, makes plays for others, scores it, hard to keep out of the lane. If he gets in foul trouble, I think this team's in trouble despite their NBA players and despite their athleticism. Randall's averaging 24 points a game. And Barbell Harris on the other side was insane the other day. He finished with 32. It's going to get good enough to just go by Marvell, man. I mean, you get to be one name kind of guy like Cher, Magic, Larry, I mean, Isaiah. I mean, that's what this guy is doing. Hey, I do like the guard matchup. You're talking about... Uh, Randall, Casper Ware, don't forget about that kid. That's going to be a heck of a matchup, but Harris, really good. Marvell, I'm sorry, really Maybe good. Maybe he'll be a symbol someday. Yes. No, well, maybe. <laughs> the symbol of our dysfunction is standing by with Darren Collins. So, Jan, Jan, take it away. Save us. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. No problem. I am with Coach Darren Collinson. Boy, about 24 hours since the last time you played. Not a whole lot of time for adjustments, but you had assistants up watching film all night. What can we expect differently out of Challenge ALS tonight? What do you want to tweak? Well, I think first things first is, you know, we haven't played well yet in this tournament. Um, so we got to own up to that. You know, coaches got to own up to, their, you know, their own responsibility, and we got to be better. So even though we advance, you know, some things that we could do a lot better, like take care of the ball, you know, playing with a little more heart. You know, I didn't feel like last game we played with that energy and that intensity. But this game, it's going to be a good test for us because they got very good bigs that can, you know, punish us in the, in the paint. They do. Meanwhile, your backcourt might pull you through with some excellent play. That seems to be a big strength for you. Yeah, it is. I mean, our backcourt has been very good, you know, all tournament long, even last year. So I'm excited about what they can bring to the table. And I think we'll be fine. You know, we just got to play with that same intensity, you know, that we did at the end of the second half last game and just play with a little bit more heart. Jeff Ayers, a new addition to your squad. What has he brought to you? He's, he's brought a lot to me. You know, Jeff has been good for me. You know, he's my high school teammate, and I know what he can bring to the table. He's very good on the defensive end. He's talking. He's being very communicative, and that's what we're going to need for our big guys, to be communicating and let our guards know what's going on behind us. Best of luck. Thanks for your time. Thank you. No worries. Tom. All right, Derek Collins, you got a win against some uh, – former teammates and they knocked out the UCLA team last night. Here's a look at our rules for nine minute quarters. You're allowed six personal fouls before you get DQ'd in this tournament. Fifth foul of each quarter, send you to the line, straight into the double bonus. No one and one in this one. Goaltending's in play, FIBA rules. You can take it off the rim, except of course on free throws. And from a timeout situation, 
There's plenty. That hasn't seemed to be an issue. Three 30s and 160. You can carry over two of your 30s to the second half. And you might want time to gather your team at the end. You won't need to stop the clock because the Elam ending is in effect. We'll unplug the clock. The first stoppage under four minutes. The leading team score plus seven becomes a target score. The first team to that target score wins. For Team Fredette, that was even 100, and they hit the century mark to win the last game. So final game of the day here in Atlanta to decide our final semifinalists. Love the Elam ending. Not a gimmick, just a different way to finish a game. Team Challenge ALS is playing with names on the back of the jerseys of those stricken with the disease, including Pete Frates, represented by Sean Marshall, his roommate back in the day at Boston College. He was the inspiration and the beginning of the Ice Bucket Challenge that raised millions to face and fight ALS. Pete Freitas has said, I don't want to be the face of ALS, I want to be the face of the cure. Big time so, matchup in the back row right there. Ware and Randall. Those Randall two guys going to go after. Yeah, Randall was great the other night. Pretty good right there. A burst for Randall, but he couldn't finish. 31-year-old from the south side of Chicago by way of Cal. On the other side, Team Challenge ALS, nothing doing. Sean Marshall with the board. Sean Marshall got off to a real slow start last night. He did get off to a slow start. I think he's the DJ Kennedy of Team Challenge ALS. He needs to, at times, pick his spots and impose his will on the game. He has a toughness about him that Kennedy possesses. Hamilton coming off of an 8.5 board performance. On the first rounder out of Texas, Taylor Braun can't knock down his first. Dan, what do you think of the whole McAdoo thing? Well, I went over and asked the coach because we got conflicting reports. Was not happy. I said, what are we talking about? We, you know, that coach there was really good. He said, hey, look, he's got to go get his visa because we had heard that it was a knee. We had been told other things. So sometimes you got to go to the source. And one thing about look, you, you do go to I the do. source. Look, if I'm James Michael McAdoo, I am protecting my contract. And if I've got to go get a visa, then I'm going to get a visa. I'm not about it. Or it was if I have a swollen knee, I'm not, I'm not risking it. I agree. Well, then the question becomes, and the next step is, if they can win, if Everline Drive can win this game and make it to Baltimore, is he going to be able to help them there? Go through Jamie. Go through Jamie. Well, he, the coach says that he's going to go and uh, he's going to be there for them. If they make it to Baltimore, that he's going to play. I mean, the coach said he, for the last six years, he's trained them. He's got them ready to go, so... Uh, we'll see what happens. Look, he's here, he's not here. The guy, Everline Drive is a great story now, right? I mean, they were considered the worst team in this event three or four years ago, and now here they are, and they got a really good team. Ron into the lane. That was finished by the Broncos of North Dakota State. Everline Drive was founded by a bunch of dudes who used to play ball together on their street in Frazier, Michigan. A little cul-de-sac, just a block off of 15 mile outside of Detroit. That's the thing that makes this team difference. Their length and their ability to contest everything at the rim. They'll win this game by, if they're going to win it, by getting stops, deflections, getting out, and transition. Not in the half court. Eveline Drive, one of the originals, one of only five teams to play in all five TBTs. That's their first that. win last year. I love that bottom. Named after the street. That's so cool. I mean, seriously, that's kind of the, I don't know, that's kind of the soul of this tournament is, that kind of thing. Yeah, but the Jake Hirschman got buried by Smush Parker when he had to play. And he's like, uh, you know what? Speaking of swollen appendages, we need to find better players. Willie Reed is one of those. And we got an injury at midcourt. Back behind the play after yeah, the Willie Reed jam. You know, when you get dunked on or destroyed by a pro, he, he, how many times do you think he's told that story? You know what I mean? And again, that's what's cool. Regular person, get a team together. Get some boosters, come out and play. $2 million to the winner. Eldridge, if he's mm. out for a significant amount of time, that's a big loss. You uh, love that guy's I game. Do. I do. He's strong. He shoots it. He's a really good player at Illinois State. One of those guys that you win big with at the mid-major level, maybe undersized for what people might think he should be. But all he does is produce. How about Taylor Braun? You're talking about a guy that played for Jeff Van Gundy. 
this past year in the USA World Cup qualifying. So you know that he's competitive. You know he knows how to play. You know that he is not a shortcut guy. That's a pretty good pickup right there, hey, I think. Everline Drive has put together some guys, right? Lou Almondson, what'd you say? He's played in the third of the league? Third of the league, 10 teams. <laughs> a lot of gear. He's got a lot of gear. <laughs> a lot of gear. He's got per diem checks from everywhere. Braun with the board. Willie Reed. <laughs> Not Willis Reed. Willie Reed. Willie Reed has played great in this tournament. He is big, he is long, he knows how to play in the middle of the floor off pick and roll. You see right here, fantastic no-look feed, and he finishes through contact. Willie Reed, two years ago, played in this, and I remember not thinking he was very good. Willie Reed is really good. How good is Jerome Randall? Oh, yeah, he's great. I mean, like, like that yeah. guy, he was better in the Pac-12 when Isaiah Thomas came out. Same year. Same year. Same time. Yeah. I think, I mean, if you look at this guy, he's got a little Isaiah Thomas in him. Isaiah Thomas, modern Isaiah Thomas. Yeah, modern Isaiah modern. Not, not your guy. Not my guy. Because you have some guys, but, you know, he's not your guy. Casper Ware, nothing like that. Casper Ware, Long Beach State. The beach, only school in the country, the beach, naming it, just in case you were wondering. Really? Yeah. Looks. big in this game. And Jordan Hamilton is an NBA player that makes NBA shots. His ridiculous range and he needs to come up big in this game. He wasn't very good the other day. He needs to come up big. So from Midtown Atlanta to Downtown Atlanta, a lot of action in the A this weekend. Tom Hart alongside Seth Greenberg. Dan Dockich and Jen Hale. This is TBT, the basketball tournament. Jerome Randall with the run out and a foul. And we are down to our final spot, working towards the semifinals. Coming your way starting Thursday in Baltimore. $2 million on the line. The tournament that started with 72 teams. Single elimination. And this is our fourth game of the day. Jerome Randall out of Chicago, former Pac-10 player of the year at Cal at the free throw line. He has been magnificent at the line, 19 of 20 in this tournament for a guy who is second in the what, nation the from the free throw line. What a cow. 31-year-old has another one coming. Darren Collison, coach, team challenge ALS. I didn't realize Darren Collison and Jeff Ayers were on the same high school team. Jeff Ayers played a long time in the NBA as well. Has a ring, if I'm not mistaken, with the Spurs. Mm -hmm. 2014. That's because he was known as Jeff Pendergraft. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Arizona State, Pendergraft, NBA Ayers. He was actually born Jeff Orca. That was his mom's maiden name. Switched to Pendergraft when his mom married his stepdad. Didn't know his dad until his senior year of high school and said once he had a kid, you know what, maybe we should go with that. He, he and his wife joked, they said, we could pick any last name. We could be Mrs. and Mr. Awesome. <laughs> but they ended up going with his dad's name. <laughs> Reed with a foul. For those of you watching us on ESPN News, feel free to flip over to ESPN2 for more of Dan Dockich's jokes. It's a 10-8 to 8 lead for Everline Drive. We're back to Atlanta in a moment. The basketball tournament is brought to you by Puma Basketball. By Sling TV, the live TV you love, only better, and only $25 a month.
Start watching seven days free at Sling.com. And Five Mile 22, starring Mark Wahlberg in theaters August 17th. TBT rolls on. Here's a look at the bracket. Number one seed overseas, elite, undefeated forever in this tournament. They'll get a test from the Golden Eagles who can stroke it from deep. Team Fredette, led by Jimmer, will be in action Thursday in the second semifinal against the winner of this one. We've seen some incredible endings already today. Some great talent on the floor, starting with overseas elite win against Ram Nation. And you're talking about the two-time MVP of the TBT, Kyle Fogg jumping up, knocking down that big jumper there. And then Travis Dieter, backcourt of oh. Dwayne Wade, knocks it down from another area. Code for a huge win. And down the stretch, this was no contest. Go through Soldier's legs, pitch it up the floor, and the guy Jordan Crawford, who was terrific all day long, knocking down a big time shot. And Team Fredette moves on as well. Diener signed by Darren Horn. That Marquette, now the associate head coach for Shaka Smart of Texas. I always thought head coaches signed players. What? You are, you are, okay, be all right. Who's, who spent all the time on the road recruiting him? I mean, I, I, he signed Jeremy Evans, the national slam dunk champion. That's my horn. Yeah. I mean, horn, dude. At him in Western Kentucky. Had a meeting with mom right after church on Wednesday night to seal the deal. Watch out. Christian Wofford. That's a spot That's right a spot right there. That's right there. Right there. That's a spot. What did he do from that spot, Dan? He defeated, and, and actually, he ended a rivalry. Oh, okay. Beat Kentucky and they haven't played since. Why not? Great question. Depends on who you ask. But it needs to happen because that is a great December rivalry. But hey, look, I'm happy for Christian Wofford. Christian Wofford is a really good player at Indiana. His younger brother, Trenton, can really, really play Seth. You know about him. But that is Christian Wofford's spot, man. You get him on the left wing. If it misses, it's going to be in and out and bad luck. Hard roll, replace, boom, knocks down that jumper. Tell you yeah. one thing this team does, they change the angles of the ball screen. Yes. Stuff. Seth, you know, I have, I have a mutual friend of ours tell us, well, are there really any sets in the TBT? And the answer is absolutely. The same sets you see in college, most NBA, you see in this tournament. Roll, replace, ball screen, change the angle on high ball screens. Right there, middle of the floor with an X action. Lou Amundsen with the foul. You, by the way, you mentioned Christian Watford's little brother. He's part of the 2019 class. He only has... Kentucky, Alabama, right Indiana, Florida State, Blue Memphis Odyssey. after him. Who else? I had him at the Adidas uh, camp this past week, the Adidas American camp. When he plays hard and he's engaged, he is really talented. He's got a big body, really good feel. How big is he? Unselfish. About 6'8". eight. And really big hands and big shoulders and uh, ridiculously skilled. Kevin Pinkney knocks the first free throw down. Our next WNBA game of the week is one of the best rivalries in the league as the Lynx take on the Sparks at Staples Center in L.A. That's Thursday night, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on ESPN2 and streaming live on the ESPN app. Ayers returns, five-point lead for Everline Drive. First quarter of play. Jerome Randall averaging 24 points in four and a third assists per game here in the tournament. Foul on the jumper. I'm anxious to see if he kicked his leg out. I know he spread him. You hate that call. Huh? You hate that call. Why? And not, if it was called because of the leg kick, now Casper Ware is saying that Randall did. Let's see. Ooh, right there. I thought he did when I saw it live, and you can tell it, a little bit there. You know, we talked this afternoon about who's the – most valuable or the most important player in the TBT. And I, I think it's DJ Kennedy. That's my gut feeling. But in terms of for their team, mm -hmm. I think Jerome Randall is the most important player for their team of anyone in this tournament. He's Donald, their only point guard. Yeah. Donald yeah. Sloan was supposed to play, former pro, former pacer. Not here. We don't have one. Eldridge is his backup, right? Yep. So I'm surprised they're not trying to make him guard, post him, or do something to try to get him in foul trouble. Come on, man. He's on the line. Yo. That's, come on, dude. That's ridiculous. Guys. Oh, my God. 
When I called the foul, I said three. I called it, I said three. You understand what I'm saying? You asked them. It doesn't mean that you're right. Okay, we can agree to disagree. Random good stuff to it's kind of like you and me. Yeah. <laughs> that's good, that's hey. the only thing you guys agree on. That's good, that's good officiating. Hey, look, we agree to disagree and you move on. Don't sit there talking. I like it. The ref was right, though. He did rule it a three. three. Yeah. Good team, Jeremy Shooter. Roland Shooter. gives it up. Marshall in the corner. You know who has not absolutely had any impact on this game right now for Challenge ALS? And he's impacted by the length of... Even drive is Marvel Harris. We haven't even mentioned his name. No, he has yet to shoot. Here's Braun. Looks He'll clean. take one up. They got to find a way to play ahead of the defense for no other reason than the length of the drive defense is contesting every shot. Even that one there was pretty good contest. They downed it, made it go to the corner, jumped up with the shooter. Just what does Mark Jackson say? Good defense, better offense. Harris all alone that time, and it skips on. If they can get some stops and get out in the open floor and get ahead of that defense a little bit, make those bigs run, I think that's a positive thing. And then they've got to find a way to contain Randall and keep him in front. There comes a sprint out ball screen eventually. Does it affect Harris on the offensive end that he's got to match up with Randall on the defensive end? I think it has. I, I don't I don't think he's oh nice, that's charge. Of Sean Marshall. And it's his second already. This is good defense. Square to shoulders. He's already there. Just move laterally. Man, you know what's amazing about that? You see that big collision, two big guys, and that doesn't hurt. No. It doesn't hurt. Why doesn't it hurt? Maybe tomorrow. Well, well, it would hurt us, but I'm just saying, those guys, he's not hurt. Well, let me ask you this. When you played, if you dove on the floor, never you hurt. charge. It's just you got back up. Yeah, never. Like, you, you think taking a charge on somebody, everybody says, well, you know. Take, God, you forearm, do take it on your forearm, fall back. Soccer yeah. players, they fall down and get hurt. Oh. Soccer players. Go. I thought you were going to go in on soccer players no, there for a moment. Go. Harris, harass. It's a double dribble. I thought it was triple dribble. Right now, they have no flow whatsoever challenge. Anyways. They're not getting the ball moved side to side. Everyone's trying to make a play for themselves. They absolutely have no spacing. Four for 17 from the field, 29%. I mean, you're not beating a good, long, athletic team unless you make them guard both sides of the floor. Beat them down the floor or make them guard both sides of the floor. Do you agree with that? Yep. Good to know. Everline drive. What's that? No, what, would you do, what would you do against Randall? I would, I, mean, I would put him denial. on the side. I would, I would make him stay on that side. If he's going to beat us, he's going to beat us on one side. He, right now, he can go either way he wants to go. Or shading him this way. But he's got too much room. He's too comfortable. He'll do whatever he wants here. Randall finishes the quarter one for five, but four for five from the line. Five turnovers for Team Challenge ALS. That's gotten in the way, so it's cold shooting. Everline Drive with a five-point lead through one quarter. Trying to find our final semifinalist of the basketball tournament. Team that didn't practice, leading the game. Monday night on ESPN, we'll have a doubleheader with four of the top teams in baseball. Phillies and Red Sox start a two-game series at Fenway at 7 Eastern. Then it's the Brewers and Dodgers at Chavez Ravine. Both games streaming live on the ESPN app. Dodgers nearly got no hit today out in the Atlanta suburbs at SunTrust Park. Lost to the Braves 4-1 in the finale of that series. Red Sox won again. They're pretty good. So it's Everline Drive. Here's where they've been, and they're hoping to, they're hoping to get to Baltimore. 86-71 win against the Brawlers. Game one, they beat Team Colorado in the second round. 55% from three in that one. And then 72-59 against Gale Force and St. Mary's team, despite shooting only three for 18 from three.
too athletic for St. Mary's yesterday. St. Mary's running a lot of good stuff, but... <laughs> Very well coached. Had a lot of practices. <laughs> they had a lot of practice, Sam. <laughs> Everline drive. Good you just, chemistry. You just get guys like him and you win games. Eldridge, that's my guy. Get him to rock. Let's see what he can do. Practice? Let's go, Jack. Oh, nice scene. If you join late, Willis Reed, uh, Reed got a lot of clean looks early in this game. As Margot Jones Harris picks up the foul, he's got six on all point blank looks. Pretty slick right here, coach. A little slick. What do you guys call it in the studio? Pass. A pocket, pocket pass. pass. I'll never say those words. Come on, stop. What, 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 There's you, words I won't pass? say. You just said room and rhythm earlier. Well, so, no, I didn't. On time, on target. No, I, you uh, did. Yeah, yeah, I was did. Just, I'll time, never say target. young fella, big fella. No, I don't uh, use a pocket pass. Why wouldn't you say now, pocket yesterday pass? You said not you a pocket would... pass. Sure it is. No, it's not. It's in the gap between the two defenders in that passing pocket. Okay. A pocket pass. All right. Is that I... not a Bob Knightism or no, something? No, it's not. It's not in the Indiana family. It's not in the Indiana terminology. It doesn't exist yeah, in but basketball. They eat their own. <laughs> oh, nobody eats their own like Indiana. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> Stay off Twitter, coach. Pass for where? The length of Evelyn Drive is taking Challenge ALS out. Jeremy Evans covers so much <laughs> ground on help and still has the ability to get out to shooters. They take away gaps. I mean. And there's Evans, former slam dunk contest winner. Look at Willie. <laughs> Willie Reed is a force in this game, just like he was against... The Gale Force. He goes to the backboard, knows his role. Better get out there, though. Ayers for three. When you're down four points and you make a three, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not totally enthralled with the hand signals and the goggles and everything else. <laughs> you only clouds. What? <laughs> hand what? We have to have parameters as to when you can well, and can't do I a three guy. I worked South Florida, and, and Leroy Selman was my athletic director. Right there. That's, Let's see. Right All right. there. Air steps back, knocks down the three, formerly known as Prince. I mean, formerly known as Jeff Pettigraff. But he used to say, he used to, we'd go to Bucks games, and he'd watch Warren Sapp. Basically, do what he was paid to do. And then he'd watch him lose his mind. He goes, why does he do that? That's why they're paying him all that money. Agree or disagree, Dan? Uh, I like enthusiasm. I like the fact that guys here in the summertime are celebrating the game of basketball. So I have no problem with it there, Seth. Right. Seth, the way you phrase it, makes it sound like no one's supposed to have fun at work. I didn't say not have fun. It's just that it, like, like every time a guy makes a three-point shot, it's like if you're a good shooter, you're supposed to make a three-point shot. Do you yeah, have to celebrate? So just every because shot you're supposed you to do it, you're not supposed to be happy about it. I think you should be happy. You know, if uh, well, yesterday when my man was making those threes and going crazy, uh, what was our guy's name? Sandman. Sandman, you were killing him. I wasn't killing him. I was just wondering who he was mumbling to. <laughs> I didn't know who he was talking to. On the other hand, I wish everybody had that kind of enthusiasm. Yeah. My trash day is Wednesday. If my sanitation guys pick up the trash and do a dance, I'm going to high five them. Like, that's fun. Have fun at work. You're not up when those guys are out there. Who are you kidding? I bring up the trash. I'm excited. Because you haven't gone to bed yet. E -J. There's EJ. <laughs> They're starting to get a little bit better rhythm offensively right now. Maybe they got in the rhythm because they were playing loose. Osiris Eldridge. Osiris Eldridge. Osiris Eldridge. Look, you coached at Long Beach. You could have been major. That's a perfect guy. Big, oh, strong. would have been great. Right? He was. He was I, great. I, I had a State. guy, Rod Hannibal, play just like that. Eldridge, three-time All-Valley player, MVP of the MVC tournament in March. Or I should say March. Uh, the jump up in the air from half court and throw a bounce pass, not so much. Bad, bad idea. Well, I think so. I stay low and dribble through traffic and kick it would be the move. Let me tell you, this team practiced all the time. All right, Drive, could they win games in the G League? Oh, yeah. Yeah. If they need another point guard. Talking about Eberline Drive? Yeah, Eberline yeah, Drive. They need they, another point if, they, guard. if they have a backup point guard, I yeah. mean, this team, I mean, it's got a bunch of guys that play the league. Yeah. I think Eberline Drive, you know, even without 
James Michael McAdoo is as talented a team as we've seen out here. And Willie Reed is one of the reasons. I'll tell you the guy that's got to step up to challenge ALS. I played five years in the NBA, Jordan Hamilton. Jordan Hamilton needs to be more involved and he needs to be engaged in this game because he can make shots, but he's just got to be so much more assertive. I mean, he's got an NBA championship ring. He's played five years in the league. He averaged double digits. I mean, he's got to give them more. He's got five points right now. Here's Jeff Ayers at the free throw line. Ayers, six years in the league. Portland, Indiana, San Antonio, and the Clippers. At eight and three last night. David Nurse is the head coach for Everline Drive. Jeremy, 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 ready? That's good coach. See what, see what, see what. Turn it, turn it, turn it. Easy, 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 easy. Willie. Go get him, go get him. Hey, 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 come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yep, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. Timeout taken by Everline Drive. It is a 30 second. Oh, he's fired up. You can draw something up now. Five seconds left on the shot clock. Baseline out of bounds coming up. We'll see what they draw up. Everline Drive up by five. Here, 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 here. Taylor, pop out, pop out. Jerome, swing back here. Oh, you're coming off either side. You're coming off this double, or you're coming off this one right here. Taylor, actually, let's come off this one. Oh, come off this one hard to the corner. Hard to the corner. Taylor, I want you going through, OK? Going through, through the middle. Yep. Let's go through right to the middle. They got him in five seconds. Look for the slip. Exactly. In the huddle brought to you by Puma. Thanks so much for my points on up. <laughs> I guess he's not real confident on that time. Right. <laughs> I think they can try to do a little elevator off one side here. Let's see if someone comes off a double. He's got a five-second play. Good play. Great, great, great play, coach. Good play. He wanted to get a single double in five seconds. Taylor Brown to play for Jeff Engler. And this time said, no, I'm going to get open and just shoot. Hey. A lot of ways to get a bucket. Let me ask you guys a question. Wow. That was a big time. That was we go back to that just for a second. Like, what makes a good huddle? When you're trying to draw up a play, when you need a bucket, what makes a good huddle? That play didn't score that bucket. That player scored right. that bucket. And what you, you want to get the ball in your best player's hands. Short clock, you want to get the ball in your best player's hands to score. All right? What they tried to do, like what he was trying to do, I think, was get it in bounds, and then run something up to single double. Five seconds, that's hard to do, don't you think? Yeah, but you know what? I, I thought that coming out of the huddle was a good time out because it seemed like everybody settled down, got a little bit organized, and, you know, Taylor Braun hadn't made much yet yesterday. Good for him to stick it in there. How about this? He can get great separation anytime, anytime he wants. Anytime he wants, yeah. Anytime. That's what I was thinking. Exactly right. He's the only guy in this game maybe that can If I was ALS, you, you need to find a way to get, except running ball screens, to get Jordan Hamilton freed up. Like there's a skip and a three right there. That's it. He's got to make that. Hamilton just one of four from deep today. Here's Braun. That's his spot, too. I'm telling you, he, he shoots from too far out. We saw that yesterday. Left wing, he shoots from about two steps too far out. Oh, Reed with the block, took the camera guy down. Eldridge will pull up. They were he shoots from too close. <laughs> <laughs> porridge is too hot, that porridge is what too cold. play right there by Braun. Spun right back into the defender, gets an and one with Ware. You know what? Ware's complaining, but I think I heard the slap from underneath the basket. That was really good by Braun. He said it. He made a good play on the steal. Then he took his time. Take your time, kids. Don't just go running in there and throw something up. Take your time. Use your size. Keep the ball up. Chin on the rim. Lay it in. And one. 
Our next WNBA game of the week is one of the best rivalries in the league as the Lynx take on the Sparks at Staples Center in L.A. Thursday night, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific, right here on ESPN2 and streaming live on the ESPN app. Minneapolis coming off of hosting the All-Star game. Tom Hart, Seth Greenberg, Dan Dockich, Jen Hale along, and Jen, it's a Really interesting connection between Sean Marshall and Pete Freitas, the person he's playing for to raise awareness for ALS. Absolutely. These two were roommates up at Boston College, and their friendship and bond has lasted through the years. Uh, so Sean Marshall, when he found out about Pete Freitas' ALS diagnosis, wanted to do something to help, to raise money, to help fight this disease and to raise awareness. So hence the beginning of Team Challenge ALS. And last year, a heartbreaking loss in the finals, a three-point loss to Team Overseas Elite. On his way home, Marshall was feeling so terribly, and he was trying to think how, how he felt like he'd failed in his mission. And so he recommitted to coming back this year and wanted to think, how can I make it better? So this is kind of a cool new thing this year. Our viewers might be confused about the backs of the jerseys for the Team Challenge ALS players. Instead of bearing their own names, they all read a name of a patient suffering from ALS and battling this disease right now. So a new way to, to raise awareness about this disease and send out love and support to those battling it. And show those families that they're thinking of those ALS victims. Marshall off the mark with that jumper. Here comes Jerome Randall. Trying to lob it at the slam dunk champ. He was knocked out of bounds. Waited about two dribbles too long. Had he gotten it, taken one dribble and let him, it would have been all right. Three starters for Challenge ALS are combined 0 for 8. And they, they just can't, they can't create easy scoring opportunities. Everybody drive down. Dan, like when you look at this team right now, I mean, I look at the length. Jerry it was driving. They're winning this game on the defensive end and, and in the hands of, of Randall. I mean, that, that's where they're winning the game because defensively, they're hard to score against. They're hard to get in a contested, uncontested shot against. They're hard to get a second shot against. You can't get to the basket because of their length. Amundsen has looked bad offensively. Tried a three, it was a mess. Tried another shot, it was a mess. But I'll tell you this, he and Evans have been exactly what you said. They've been in the right spot. They've been off help. They've gone towards the basketball. And when you maybe see them on TV, they don't look as long as they are, but both of those guys are incredibly long. Randall from inside the arc over Evans, and he got fouled, and Jordan Hamilton can't believe it. <laughs> no. Hey, look, ALS is saying that. He got fouled by his old man. <laughs> That's what they were saying. They were saying that Evans fouled him. Unless they're saying that Jordan Hamilton pushed him into the screen, that's a foul on Jeremy Evans. <laughs> he got right pushed there. in there. Come on. I mean, Hamilton pushed him in. White over here, blue over here. They're going to talk about White it. White over here. Blue over there. Hamilton was whistled for it. They want to see if it was a two or three. It was a two all the way, but Tony Green and Chuck Jones are going to see something interesting when they dial this one up. That is under video review. After the play, a foul assessed to number five, Jordan Hamilton, his second. It's a two. I mean, that's not even close. If you didn't see the difference between a two or a three, it's hard to say. I was going to say it shouldn't be rough. It's hard to say that you, didn't, you saw Jordan Hamilton push Evans into the shoot. Yeah, that, one. that shouldn't take very long. It didn't. But you're so right. It's like, man. I mean, like, sometimes it's close and you got to go, you know, but that one. Hey, give me three more looks. Jeez. Yeah. I'm just happy that you take long because if that took a long yeah. time, my guy to my right, oh my goodness. That would have been painful. They called it after. So they called the push. They didn't call it on the shot. They called the push, not the foul on the shooter. Good steal. Good switch out on that. If the foul was after, then why did they have to look and see if it was a three in? Anyway? Well, because the shot went in. Shot went they in. weren't sure. Oh, I got you. Yeah. 
So <laughs> Braun commits his first. That wasn't even close. Oh, man. We're going to have to start reviewing layups. What we got? Well, Jeremy Smith's going to try to make a play. There's no doubt about it. A little matchup zone right here, Coach. It's a good matchup yeah, when you got up. Jeremy Evans and his length on top. Tom Crean was in the building a little bit earlier. Too bad he didn't stick around. He offered Jerry Smith a scholarship when he was in eighth grade. That's the turn him down. Ended up at Louisville. Spin move by Deshaun Stevens. But Deshaun Stevens is the type of player that should be effective against this team. Because he does have the length. He does have the athleticism. Terrific player at San Diego State. He's played in Japan, Turkey, France, Italy. The amazing part about Deshaun Stevens is he was cut from his high school team. Not like Jordan where you're cut and you go go play JV. He didn't make the team. He was only 6'3 when he graduated high school. Grew five inches after his senior year. He was working at a shoe store and then finally was like, whoa, I'm I'm six eight. I might want to go try to play basketball somewhere. Santa Monica College and then played for Steve Fisher with the Aztecs. Willie Reed for the for Everline Drive. Jay That's a heck of a growth spurt once you're already done with high school. Tell you what, he's a good basketball player, very successful. That San Diego State program when he was there was absolutely terrific. Indeed. I mean, and one of the great environments. Mm -hmm. For what's sure the on, the West, on the West Coast. I was going to say, what's the best environment on the West Coast? Arizona. Not, I was going to say, not Arizona, not UCLA, not USC. Well, not, you, UCLA I'm, I'm wouldn't saying, be in the conversation. No, 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 I know, but I'm talking about of the schools like San Diego State, of the what would you include? Long can we, can we include Gonzaga, or you want to stick, no, stick to SoCal? Yeah. I say oh, the state's got to be there. I think so. Nevada right now, what Eric Musselman's doing right now, they've got an incredible energy about that program. And they've got all those guys coming back. they got the Martin Twins coming back. They've got Jordan oh, Carroll back coming hands. back. And you cannot get to the rim against this team. Oh, Braun couldn't finish. Reed is there. Evans saves it, but right back to ALS and Marvell Harris. Willie Reed! He'll stay in this direction because he's stepped on the end line, but Willie Reed covered some ground. That's closing speed. And Willie Reed was under the bucket on the offensive and getting knocked around. Check this out. There's Pitney. Look at that job, Jeremy Evans. And then look at Marvell Harris. Willie Reed running the floor. I think for Challenge ALS to win this game right now, they got to make this game as ugly as possible. Let me ask you a question. Does LeBron James make blocking shots and running back on defense cool? Gave a name to it. Man. Running it down, right? I, I, I hate to give the one every six game block based on how many times LeBron James hangs out on the other end and complains about a foul. I hate to give that that kind of credit, but that's probably the Indiana Pacer fan in me. That was a little commentary right there. Yeah. Just not a fan of LeBron. I love LeBron. When he doesn't, when he thinks Jerome he gets fouled, he doesn't get back on defense. All right, you're right. Let's ask Collison. We, we can't talk to you now? I try to talk to you. you. You never, no, you never had a conversation with me yet. I tried. When? I tried. When did you try to talk to me? I tried. Okay, all right. Sounds like me and my first wife. <laughs> <laughs> Derek Collins is having a hard time communicating with the officials. Yes, he now. is. Why do you think yes, that is? Yes. You know, he's What's losing. What's and when you're losing, you're usually What's a little irritable. What's up? Uh, What's up? Uh, What's up? Uh, What's up? But I have to admit, these officials, although they've done a very good job, they're not exactly going to listen and hear and have a conversation. There's no Roger Ayers or Mike Eads out here. The two best officials in college basketball. So you're saying it's a bad thing. They're saying that's a bad thing that they won't have conversations. I think that I think you've got it. If a guy's talking to you in a, in a proper way, there's nothing wrong. With two things, officials. Nothing wrong with having a conversation. Nothing wrong every once in a while saying, you know what? I might have missed that. One. You're not going to be right all the time. Mm -hmm. I might have missed that one. I'm doing the best I can. Now, when a guy says I'm doing the best I can, what are you going to say? So it's not good enough. I, I need to get you fired. <laughs> I'm calling the league <laughs> office at half. The ability to get inside this defense. I mean, look at look at the length on this defense. Evans and Reed and Watford and, and Braun. And that's a big, long, active, athletic lineup. 
that understands how to play. They do a good job of closing out. How about that defense? Wow. And that's big time defense. Yeah, it is. But Savior for ALS is he have nine offensive rebounds already tonight. But they've been without a bucket for the last four minutes. There's only one thing happening right here, Coach. I believe it's going to be Randall doing something, creating space. Your he thoughts? the switch, and now he's just going to attack the switch. Behind the back, another shake with three on the clock. Got you! Jerome Randall with a flex. He's got 14. The lead all scores in Everline Drive is halfway to 80 at the half. What a move. Seth, you called it. Only one thing going to happen here, and that's that kid right there going to go to work. And, man, did he go to work. This is pretty sweet. Got the mismatch he wanted behind the back. A little shake, a little crossover, kick out, ball down, drill the shot. And he didn't get the kick out. I thought it was going to be three-point play. But, look, this guy's the difference of any team in this tournament right now. Most valuable player in the Most tournament. Most valuable player. They are not close to being here. And on the other end, the length of Reed, the length of Evans, uh, how active they are defensively, that's the difference on the defensive side of the ball. Jerome Randall catching his breath. Jen Hale is there to chat with him. He has a reason to be out of breath, Tom. All right, walk me through that last shot. That was awesome. I uh, just tried to create space to get my shot. That's all. This team has been on fire since the very beginning. How do you, how have you controlled the game so well? We play team basketball. I mean, this game is far from over. I mean, as you all know, you know, teams can come back and get hot any second. And plus, we got the, you know, four-minute rule, you know. So what we got to do is just come out and try to play hard. Defensively, you've been amazing. You've held three of their starters to zero points for most of the first half. Now one of them has one point. How are you shutting them down? That's a team effort. I mean, these guys are great offensively one-on-one. -on -one. We all know that. All of us are professionals. You know, they're doing really well, you know. So we just playing team basketball and team defense. Thanks, Jerome. Thank you. Tom. All right, thanks, Jen. Jerome Randall and his teammates have combined for seven assists. They've held Team Challenge ALS to just 26% shooting from the floor. A trip to the semis, the Charm City on the line. Everline Drive leading Team Challenge ALS at the half with $2 million waiting the winners. Jordan, how do you get this basketball to start falling this half? Uh, we just got to make shots. I mean, we've been here before. We just got to come out, still be aggressive, try to get some stuff going to the rim and not settle for jump shots. Is their length bothering you? Oh, not at all. I mean, they had a couple block shots, but I think we'll make the shots that we missed this half. Best of luck. Thanks. Thank you. I like that attitude. Those shots we missed first half, we're going to make them this time around. They, they need to make them to get back in the game, but let's, let's be real now. The length of this defense is contesting passing lanes, it's contesting shots, it's contesting drives, uh, it's distorting passing lanes, distorting shots. Uh, they ha don't have an answer. They've got to try to find a way to spread them out like that a little bit. 26% shooter. Even there, hey, right, right there, Harris had a drive. All of a sudden, here came the help, and he had to go a double pump over the head. Taylor Braun from Newburgh, Oregon, gives it up to Jerome Randall. Looking for Braun off the screen. Or Reed. Osiris Eldridge is fouled. First in Illinois State history in threes, fifth in points, an 1,800-point score. Osiris Eldridge shooting two. They got on that whistle. I don't have the whistle. You got to let him play on on that. What do you think? I think it was foul. I mean, didn't he hit him? Didn't seem like he yeah, hit I couldn't him. tell. You, certainly, Sean Marshall reacted as if he did not. The game's been pretty physical around the basket. Yeah. So if the game's going to be physical around the basket, you know, something like that in this point of the game, I think you just let him play. Really? Yeah, you let him the play. shooter? Can't touch the shooter. Didn't seem like he got touched. Nobody picks up where. Like... <laughs> Pick up by Harris. This is his first bucket. He comes here in the second half. Well, he's got to get going. I mean, he's, look, you said it's at 32. Really good in every way. Jeremy Evans. Jeremy Evans. Evans. Baron Horn Scott. Yeah. into Western Kentucky, Street 16. Slam dunk champion. And a great artist, by the way. Played in the NCAA tournament. They were showing off some of his sketches. Evans gets his hands on it. 
That's research right there. He, uh, Jeremy Evans won the dunk contest by posterizing his own teammate, Gordon Hayward. Was he not on a team? Wasn't he not on a team and they brought him in from the G League to be in the dunk contest? Wasn't that how it went? Am I wrong about that? I don't think you're wrong about anything. Thank I think you. you are always right. Oh, you are in my head, sir. Randall, think like I think. His first, team's first. Where's offense coming, Coach? Harris? I think I think it's Harris and Ware, the only two guys that can just go get a shot. I don't think Jordan Hamilton can get his own shot. Pendergraft maybe on a pick and pop. We've you talked before about Marshall, out. maybe. There you go. I don't think Marshall's matchup, though, is he's trying to score over length. We can't power over that length. Here's the thing. Can they speed up even drive to the point where they're going to play faster and take bad shots? And if they do, they still get the glass. And Willie Reed is just playing hard. He caused Ayers to foul just by being strong and big and willing. Jeff Ayers, that is his first and it's his second. So that's the first on Ayers. Got to get to five to get in the bonus. He said that's the best they've done against him. That was as good a defense as you can play. That was absolutely <laughs> terrific defense. Yeah. Beat him to the spot, put him on his chest, made him change direction, and yet he had the ability to collect himself and score. Watch this right here. Casper right on his chest, changes direction, gets back in the play, contests the shot, and he still scores. <laughs> Jerome Randall had an interesting comment in an article talking about his failure to make it to the NBA. He said, never judge a player by how he goes about his business on the basketball court. He felt like he was judged as a person by the emotion that he played with. Evans with the block. He said, some play quiet, some play angry. Reed and one. He's into double figures. I wonder if Jen re-asks Jordan Hamilton right now if length is affecting him, what he might say, because this is right here is all length. Length and running. Look at Willie Reed run. Let me ask you, as, as we've seen the last two weeks, if you had to handicap the Final Four saying that Evelyn Drive is going to make it to the Final Four, not that I want to be Prescott to the future. But how would you handicap the Final Four? Well, on the one side, Golden Eagles and Marquette against overseas elite. I would take overseas elite. The champ is the champ until you beat the champ. It's a lot of champs. Yeah. Um, I really like Eberlin Drive. I really do. And if James Michael McAdoo is going to play next week, that certainly helps the cause as well. Wait, wait, how do you think Travis Dean is getting ready? So he's going to get some sleep, drink some beer. Deshaun Stevens. And that's how you get ready for games. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He's I living his I... best life, isn't he? Yeah. There's a little length for you. Wow. Like Suffocating. I mean, you drive it to kick it, but not on the first side where they're just sitting in the lane. I mean, their defense, their alertness, their length, and their ability to share it like that. This team to me looks like the best team in the tournament in terms of athleticism, length, awareness, and elite leader in the guard. Hey, in the truck, guys, can you rewind late yesterday when Everland Drive couldn't really play because they didn't practice? No, they the best. They did, they did practice. They just didn't practice with everyone. <laughs> I always say older dudes that don't know how to play can have play. high basketball IQs. They've been around a lot of basketball. If they're unselfish and they play hard, the talent's going to win out. So the talent is winning out. Let me Did ask you know that in advance that they were going to be like this? Sure. Didn't think maybe maybe they could be turds and they wouldn't trust each other. They wouldn't share the ball. You gave him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, absolutely. I, That's I the this way you've always been. Sure, sure. <laughs> if only they had can James you, Michael McAdoo. Can you can you make a case why nobody would bring in Jerome Randall to their NBA camp? If you're going to bring in, it sounds I mean, silly. He's too old, right? Yeah, but here's the thing. I don't care how old the guy is. 
in this moment in time, at the end of your contract, at the end of your roster, you're paying minimum. So, you, like, someone's going to have minimum at the bottom of, uh, of a roster. Why wouldn't you, if you want a third point guard, bring in a guy like this? At least the camp. Yeah, with zero. That's what I'm saying. I mean, look at him physically. He is ripped. He can go all day. He's got every dribble you want. He just made an unbelievable pass right there, about his tenth of the day. You can't tell me that there are better players in the NBA, or excuse me, that there aren't worse players in the NBA than Joel Brand. You can't tell me that. No, it's finding the right look. It only takes one team. That's it. I mean, that, that's the biggest thing. Everyone talks about the NBA and, and getting a, a contract. It's really hard to make the NBA. Good players, there are good players that don't have an opportunity to play in the league. But when you're one of those guys towards the end, it takes one team to like you. That's it. So, I mean, to me, it's his agent's responsibility to figure out and find that one team and get him into a camp where there's potentially a roster sport right. at worst. A two-way contract, but the problem for a guy like that is, at this stage of his career, he doesn't want a two-way contract no. for 75000 He's going to make real money overseas. Well, okay, I'd love to have that conversation with Jerome Randall, though. Like, give him an either-or, because you've played overseas. You averaged five assists a game in Germany last year. You've said, I think that window has closed. What if you had to make a financial sacrifice to open the window? What is it worth to you to play in the NBA? No, and as, as some a, guys, no, no, in the NBA, yes. A two-way contract, no. Because two-way contract, if you don't get brought up, yeah, you can make 250 if you get brought up to a certain number of games. But what do you no, make? 75? Understood, understood, but that's that's the avenue. If that is the only avenue, and that's how you can crack open that window, do you take the financial hit to get to the association? How much money has he made to this point? Yeah, you got to know all that. But, look, let's be honest. We all, I don't know if he's good enough to play in the NBA. I don't. But I do know this. There are worse point guards in the NBA than him. Ball last touch by everyone. Like, I look at him and Yogi Ferrell. Yogi Ferrell averaged 10 points a game, just signed a deal with the Sacramento Kings. Real money, too, right? Real money. But to me, real money. So, is he not as good? Could he not play? I know Yogi's younger. Yogi's a pretty good player. He's a really good player. This guy does a lot of the same things that's, that Yogi that's does. That's why I used him. Well, look, Casper Ware is a guy who, who's played in the league, played for the Sixers for a while. Personally, I don't think there's any comparison between the two. Look at that pass. No, there's different levels of conditioning right now between the two, but he, he, this kid here is solid gold. And I tell you, you like guys that have a little bit of a chip and you have to feel like, like he, right now, he's playing on national television. He has been on national television since he left Cal probably, right? Sure. He's yeah, on yeah. the stage. Yeah. I mean, he, what he's trying to do this weekend and, you know, when they get to the Final Four and potentially championship is on this stage basically creates some type of intrigue to give him an opportunity to open up a door. And I think he has. It's Jerome Randall's. Now, look, I, I, I could say, I could see NBA scouts sitting at home going, what are you guys talking about? Look who he's playing against. He's not playing against NBA guys. Okay, maybe not. I don't know. But I do know this. He has an, a, a look about him that says I, he's a serious guard. Our next WNBA game of the week, one of the best rivalries in the league. The Lynx take on the Sparks. Staples Center in L.A. Thursday night, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific, right here on ESPN2. 18 now for Jerome Randall. Streaming live on the ESPN app as well. Let's bring in Jen. Well, you know what, Tom? If Everline Drive does triumph here, it's going to be an especially sweet victory because last year, guess who knocked them out of things? Yep, it was Team Challenge ALS, second round in Las Vegas. So they're playing with a little bit of an extra chip on their shoulder, remembering that loss today. And clearly, when you look at that score, it shows. 57-39. Pretty good. It was really good. Right, the ball stuck a little bit there, but the play he made was ridiculous. How about they what? 
Great help. <laughs> the job Braun does closing yes. out on a hard skip close to baseline on that play, is now, ridiculous, but Joe Randall's the best player in the team right now in this it's moment in time. His ability to make plays for himself, for his teammates, you cannot contain him. He's got all kinds of floaters, and that's why Evelyn Drive is on the way to the Final Four. Monday night on ESPN will have a doubleheader with four of the top teams in baseball. Phillies and Red Sox will start a quick two-game series at Fenway at 7 Eastern. Then we go out west. The Brewers and Dodgers at Chavez Ravine, both games streaming live on the ESPN app. And we are a day closer to the trade deadline Tuesday at 4 o'clock. Should be some interesting moves coming down. Red Sox look like they are running away from Seth's Yankees. Here's a look at the semifinals. One side is set. Overseas elite you taking on the personal. Oh well, yeah, go. I, that's what they say. You want to personify this stuff. This stuff. Golden Eagles at seven o'clock on Thursday. Team for debt awaiting the winner of this one. Nine o'clock in the second semifinal championship game Friday night. Nine o'clock Eastern on ESPN. He, he wants to personalize it. Yes, that's what I'm saying. That Not personify. It. <laughs> so like, all right, for team for debt. Yes. Who contains <laughs> Randall? Well, I think Jordan Crawford's going to have to take a swing. That's going to be Same two guys size. going flat out after yeah. each other. Just got a text, didn't realize it, but when Jerome Randall played in Turkey, played for my brother, and Eskashir, I think that's what the team's name was back then, and he said he's a physical machine. Whatever that is. Who did Jerome Randall play for in college? Hey, for Ben Braun. He's continuing to text me. That's good to know. Watch he's it, watching. Nice. He had a lot of little guards. Earl Boykin. We beat Earl Boykin at Eastern Michigan when he had Derek Dial, who was a second-round pick, and we had a point guard who was a walk-on that held Earl Boykins to 29 points. And I remember <laughs> telling the kid, never oh my said God. what a great effort, what a great defensive job you did when you held him to 29 points. Earl Boykins played 14 years in the league, was unbelievable. Best little guard, little, little, little guard I've ever seen. Better than Muggsy Bogues, right? Muggsy Bogues overrated. Yeah, Muggsy Bogues couldn't make shots. No. Muggsy Bogues was most dangerous when he was behind you. Is that right? He could ch talk about chasing chase you down. That. Oh, he could chase you down. Hominson with his first point. How do you beat Ibn Drive? I, I, as you look at this team, they're really good defensively. I, I, I don't know why anyone doesn't try to zone them. Keep them in front and try to make them make a bunch of jump shots because you're not keeping. That's a ugly looking free throw. Uh, you're not going to keep them out of the lane playing the man to man with any type of step up ball screens. No, no. Now the problem really is down here. Like Braun is a really good defender. Really good. You mentioned it earlier. He's he's guarded the ball one on one, and you talked about it. close out, move your feet, take away the shot, high hands. Short, choppy state, well schooled kid. Right there, tries to reach in a little bit, but he can guard the ball. He can close out on, on reversal. He can rebound his position. He's got good length. He's physically strong. I mean, he, there's a matchup with Jimmer. Yeah. Right there. Absolutely. Yeah. I tell you this, even the drive is pretty well coached, too. There's no drama over here, there's no nothing. The guys come in, they go out, they run their stuff, they get the ball to the right guy. No one's jealous of Randall. Why would you be jealous of Randall? I mean, he's just making the game easier for everyone else. Well, you know, here's something that's interesting in this tournament, Seth. We saw Jared Sullinger say it is a job interview. We've been talking about the NBA for Randall. If everybody out here thinks they could be in the league, right? Oh, no doubt. So, including Casper Ware. Now Randall to turn it over. Hamilton finds Roland. Hard to get that basket. That's pretty good by Casper Ware. It's the first time really you saw him go hard after Randall. It's so important. Let's go to let's go with Uncle Dan here. Kids out there, let's make sure. It's pretty good, but let's make sure that we play hard all the time. Like Casper Ware played harder than Randall right there, got into him, and didn't allow him to move. Do you wear a cardigan sweater when yes, you turn this and I, have <laughs> <laughs> I have my Gene Katie wrap around, and I 
I'm just wondering. Yes, I, mean, I do. <laughs> Gather around, kids. Play. So, look, 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 look at where on the right side. Look, he's guarding him. He's holding him. This is how you play him. There you go. If Mr. Rogers got a movie, I'm afraid it will happen with Dan Dockage. You can't turn it back. It would be a different rating system on a movie. <laughs> yeah, I think it would be. <laughs> I can see Dan. I can see Dan with the, the cardigan and, and the pipe. And, hey. Okay, boys and girls, let's talk about playing hard all the time. Play hard all if the time. If we play hard all the time, then we have a better chance to win. Professor Dockage. Good things come to those that play hard. And don't swing at bad pitches. Well, just as TVT does with everything, we asked fans to submit a trophy design. And Bayheim Army's fan and architect David Evans won with the design of an inverted peach basket. Utah's Matt Glenn sculpted the bronze trophy. It's 30 inches tall, weighs 70 pounds. It's five inches shorter than the Stanley Cup and twice as heavy. Each champion team member's name will be engraved in the trophy. There's enough space in the trophy for another 18 years. The B from the tournament logo, carved in the trophy, embedded with black iron. That's rim material for the lines that represent the ribs of the ball in the logo. The top of the Maplewood B is sculpted to receive a gold-plated bowl. Inset is in the shape of an inverted peach basket that can be engraved with the winner's names. 18 years worth of room. Hey, let's let's make no bones about it. This thing's only getting bigger. This I is, love it. This, this is, is fantastic not going point. away. This is going to get bigger. The prize money is going to get greater. Alumni teams are going to get into it. This is where this is headed. And it is in a perfect spot in the calendar. Yes. No other hoops going on. We had the WNBA All-Star Game a couple days ago, so there's a vacuum there. And if you want to watch hoops, this is what you're going to watch. Yep. No doubt. Absolutely. Seth, I think you're absolutely right. My answer to that is human nature, right? I mean, there you go. Marvell, strong kid. He's, he, he has not played nearly to the level, and that has affected the entire offensive side for Challenge ALS. But speaking of the, the energy, it's starting with wear on Randall. Remember, right. it started at midcourt suffocation a few plays ago. And then Marshall commits his fifth. ALS foul against number 23, Sean Marshall, his fifth person. Team in the bonus. Christian Watford is you too. Christian Wofford at the free throw line. By the way, I didn't realize, you know, Wofford was a four-year starter there at Indiana. He's in the top five or top ten in school history in, like, every yeah. notable offensive category. For all the greats that played at Indiana, Wofford's name is right there with everybody. Well, you know, they play a lot more games. Seth has talked about that, and you said it. He's a four-year starter, played every night. You know, three-point line helped him a ton because he's a big guy that could go out and shoot it. Christian Wofford was a great Indiana basketball player. And he came around at the right time because that's when Tom Green had to yes. try to rebuild that whole thing. He came at the time where you come right in and you start. And they're going to foul. Here's the problem. with If you get up and under Randall and really get into him, he's crafty enough to take it at you and then play through you, and you're going to foul him. Casper Ware's got four now. Randall, 10 of 11 from the free throw line. 0 for 2 from deep. Did you say the Cubs are in a rain delay right now? Yeah. Yep, Cubs in a rain delay. Welcome to all you people that switched over. Yeah, nice of you to join us. So that means 
Tonight after Sunday Night Baseball, SVP is going to be up late for Sports Center. He'll talk with A-Rod about the trade deadline. Lewis Riddick will be in to talk about what to expect from the Eagles this season, plus the latest SC feature, the amazing story of former Olympic high jumper Jamie Neto and his recovery from a spinal cord injury. Sports Center at SVP after Cubs cards on ESPN. You know what I was shocked by, and I'll be surprised if you know, but my colleagues didn't know who Lily King was. Hamilton with the bucket. Last night at about 1 o'clock in the morning, we had a Lily King uh, lecture. America's greatest Olympian, not named Michael Phelps. And, and the reason that you like her as much as you do, besides her being a phenomenal athlete and a great star, is because of what she did. Besides, like she called out the Russian lady, world champ, wagged her finger at her in the pool, and then whipped her in the final. I don't know how we got to that, but yeah, there's thank no goodness telling. we did. What? It wasn't we, you. <laughs> Randall, floater, bucket. Oh, you're going to give him an offensive foul. That takes some of the fun out of it. Ball pressure, speeds the ball handler up, gives people a chance to get into help. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden now, a bucket here, and things can get at least competitive. What? Great job, Stephen. I can't believe you asked how we got to that. That's like, that's unbelievable. <laughs> Eldridge with the foul. Nobody knew. Now why would why would even drive? Now they've gotten into the fight. Instead of being smart, containing, keeping in the front, not getting split, contesting shots, and just playing contain. Why would you go up and pressure the basketball in the backcourt and foul? 50 feet from the basket. I don't know. It I, makes that, no sense whatsoever. You know, Seth, you said, and you said it all weekend. You know, these guys have a Ph.D. in basketball, you know, and they do. They're, they're playing all over the place. But even Ph.D.s do dumb things, truthfully. I mean, really, because that is inexcusable. And it, we're going to talk about a 14-point game here as opposed to, what, 22 a few minutes ago. Huge at the end of this quarter right now. This turned into a rock fight. And we said at the start of the second half, only chance – challenge AR had is to make it a rock fight and get the game ugly. The game has gotten ugly, which is huge right now to challenge AOS. Randall trying to beat the buzzer. Step back, hand in his face, and he won't get the roll. 14-point lead for Everline Drive over Team Challenge ALS. Don't forget the Elam ending is coming your way. We're going to put Dan Dokic on the ones and twos and see what happens. Wiki, 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 wiki. 14-point lead. Big two minutes coming up. Wiki, wiki, wiki. Oh, gee. The basketball tournament is brought to you by Puma Basketball. And by Dollar Shave Club. However you get ready, welcome to the club. Dollar Shave Club has everything you need to look, feel, and smell your best at dollarshaveclub.com. Get some movement. Let's stop them in transition. They're going to come out with, look here, we have nine minutes. They're going to come out with a ton of energy. We have to out-energy them in these three first minutes. We have two timeouts and a media. If you have a, hey, hey, if this isn't what you play for right here, I don't know what it is. They still think they're the favorite, man. They still think they're in this game. They came back from many games like this. Punch them in the mouth. Head coach for Everline Drive. He's got a lot of energy in the middle of that huddle. They're up by 14. We got the Ever uh, the Elam ending coming your way as we get under four minutes. And we'll see how that affects the possible comeback for Team Challenge ALS. Tom Hart, Dan Dockett, Seth Greenberg, and Jen Hale. Final of four today. Final spot in the semis on the line in Baltimore. Coming your way Thursday night on ESPN. Here's Christian Wofford. Offensive foul. Why? That's what I, if I was sitting on the sideline right now, I'd be going wide. They did a nice job. What they did, if you play against teams that overplay, you spread the court out, right? You stretch the defense out. But right there, that's just, what are you doing? Get out of the play. Shallow cut. He has a double gap. He gets to the basket. Boom, layup. Now it's going to be 12-point game. What do you think? 
like this. At one point, I, I the lead is 22. With you. That's our guy. Got to go. Marvell Harris with the jam. First time anybody's gotten to the rim without resistance. You had Willie Reed out there. You had Watford. You had Evans. And nobody. They got spread out. Nobody came to the ball. First time all game. All of Harris' like points this. have come in the second half. They put Jordan, they put Jordan Hamilton on, on uh, Randall. And pretty good move. Mm, nearly a walk. walk. Where for three. Dang. 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 Casper Ware with a triple. He's got 22. It's a nine-point game. The lead was once 22. Let's see who switches here. They're going to Evans against a mismatch on Smith which is fine if you're at Challenge ALS. Help from Hamilton, ends in a foul. How have they done it? How are they getting open? Lack of defensive intensity by spreading the court. You want drivers guarding all over the floor and then just really just transition, poor communication. Bam, knocks down the three. Evans misses these free throws. Where's the pressure right now, big boy? Got a little game pressure. But you know who's good at game pressure? If I can hear about that now. Nope. Made a 35-foot putt. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy Evans from Crossfit, Arkansas, by way of Western Kentucky, where he played for Darren Horn. I like him. I, I thought when I turned the TV on and he was in the summer league this summer, I thought he was doing things. I don't know if he's a great player, but he does things. You know, he affects the game both ends. Tips, rebounds, runs. What's not to like about him? A free throw, but. So we've got the Elam ending coming up at the under four timeout. Um, any strategy that ALS needs to consider before we get to Elam? Before the clock gets turned off? A little better discipline right there in this possession. Defensively for Evelyn. Good shot fake. Corner really three. Oh. Got a game, huh? You know what I like? They have forced nothing. Good call here. Where it was grabbing. Random. But that's not a terrible foul. Well, it's just fifth, so that's, that's maybe an issue. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, just the aggressiveness. I like the fact that they did not force shots up. They just kept the ball moving. Kept, you said it. They kept shot faking, finding the next shot faking, probing. Eventually got what they wanted. This is what Randall wants, guarded by Jerry Smith now. This is a good matchup for Randall now. He can create some separation here. I'd say the second time he touches it, Jerry Smith, I'm not sure he has the discipline defensively to guard Randall. Randall working on where oh, left to be behind, but Braun came up with it. Shot clock's now at five. Quick jump. All coach. Got to give the ball up. Got to give the ball up here. This is bad business. Have you seen Smith make a play for anyone else? No. Like no his, head, he, his head is down, and he's going to try to make a play. It's good coaching. Yeah. Signing him and getting him here this weekend. Hey, the good, good GMing. Coaching. <laughs> really good GMing. Hey, what'd you do? Huh? We just signed an NBA dunk champ. This is bad business, too. You got to keep the ball popping. Wow, AJ Rowan for three. That was, feels like everybody's hot for Challenge AL. Six point game. Isn't that amazing how basketball goes? Like one guy starts making, then everybody just throwing them in. And it started with one guy playing hard, yes. and then everyone else buying in. Braun left open. Run out. All right, made bucket here. Do you get a timeout? Yeah, you got to. This is going in, isn't it? Oh, that way home. Boy, he shot that with a ton of confidence. Hey! Count it. Three-point opportunity for Taylor Braun. Hey, that's pretty nice. This could, this could have gone either way. The reason it didn't is you're going to see a little turn of the shoulder right there. It was a good call, really good call. And Taylor Braun not settling, not staying to the three-point line. Nice cut, finish. I'll tell you what Taylor Braun is. He's a perfect blend guy. Yes. Defends, 50-50 ball, runs the floor, attacks, won't take a bad shot, moves the ball. 
He's actually a very good compliment. I like what Challenge ALS is doing to Randall now. They're sending a second defender at him as many times as they can just to try to speed him up even that much more. Darren Collison's squad has made it a nine-point game with 5.45 to go in the fourth quarter. Remember, the Elam ending will come at the first step ball under four, and we'll have a target score to get to, so no reason to rush when you get late, but it always turns into a frantic pace. And Challenge ALS is now hitting some shots. Well, Challenge ALS got themselves back in the basketball game, as Seth said, just by playing harder and making it a rock by more determination. And it's amazing what happens. You start playing hard defensively, all of a sudden your shots go in. It's not the other way around usually. And they're doing this by going small. They're yeah. playing four quick attacking players to force in the bigs to guard out on the floor and driving it and actually making plays for each other. These are five guards on the court basically right now. See, Evans is matched up right now with Marvell Harris. Length. Rolling over Braun. Foul tip. You mentioned it earlier. They, they turned it up. They got invested. And they sleepwalked for the first two and a half quarters. What is Casper Ware? I mean, it was all Casper Ware. Wow. Push off on Evans. I was watching that whole thing. Rolling got around him. Evans got in front. Rolling got around. And then Evans just kind of whipped his arm around and kind of threw him away. Here's the deal. Why throw it there on the first side? Why don't you just swing it and uh, let him catch it on the other side? That's a pet peeve of my set. First side post-ups don't work very Doesn't often. Work. Force three. Bad possession. I mean, if it goes in, I suppose need, it's you, good. You, you just, don't need it right now. You can get a good possession, cut it to five. I mean, you don't have to. You're not making seven points in one place. So you might as well have a good offensive possession. That's a bad pass. Pass was the eyes of the receiver. You can't run that roller into that help. That's a skip pass and an open three. Watch right here as Evans rolls. Good job of tagging the roller. Well, you know what? Then you got to skip it out. Or Braun's got to get up in the window. But you can't make that pass. You can't catch. It's like throwing to the receiver over the middle. Hard catch, don't you think? Yeah, particularly across your body. Going left. Randall working on Jerry Smith. Jerry Smith playing pretty good. Really good. Braun of Barmy Amundsen, no. Marvell Harris. Just need a bucket, fellas. One more. No way. They're taking himself. Jerry Smith finds his first field goal of the game. Five-point game. Coming into the Elam ending right here now, fellas. I'm going 10 seconds. I'm calling timeout if I'm Evelyn. I'm calling timeout at four minutes. I want all my points to count. I only need seven. I got a quick, yep. Oh, that's a bad foul. Now they get the timeout. Yep. And they, they shoot have the free throws and they have possession. Foul on Jerry Smith. Jerry Smith got a bucket a moment ago to make it a five-point game, and we are now at the Elam Mending. We'll turn the clock off. It'll be a race to 77. Go, oh, hey, listen. This is all we got right here, all right? You got to give me everything you got right now. Everything you got right now. Don't waste no opportunities. If you see a guy about to shoot, don't waste your energy. Get there. Get there. Come on, let's fight through this. It's a long game right now. It's for us. Let's go. Let's take this. Come on. Let's go. All right, everything you got. All right, finish on three. In a huddle brought to you by Puma. 
Down the home stretch we go. Elam ending in effect. Darren Collison's team trying to put together a comeback. At one point, they trailed by 22. Jerome Randall at the free throw line. And this is huge because now it's basically a five point game. That's he makes these two foul. free throws. That's a bad foul because now all of a sudden you foul them, you get to four minutes. Here's the two free throws. They've got, they're basically two possessions away from winning this game. Jerome Randall at the free throw line. He has been money. He's got 24. Now, the most important thing right now for the drive, they can't foul. They just got to keep it in front, right? Be alert off the ball, take away the splits. Rolling in the paint. Pretty good possession right there. Now, so, get a good offensive possession. What do you think, Dan? Hey, well, I think you're going to see a lot of this right here because Jerry Smith can't keep in front. Randall for three. Got it! Big triple for Randall. And they're a bucket away from winning it. Challenge ALS needs some buckets and some stops. Like Eldridge is, is denying the ball to wear. You think bucket, Jerome Randall drive shoots it, it? Drive it now. Yeah, make Just him five. Drive, put him in a bad it, spot. Drive it now. I don't want to spread the floor. No, don't even bring in that extra defender in there. There you go. Randall floater. No. Where's got it? That's the negative on going flat. And there's the run out of the jam. Hard to cover the backboard. 13 for Harris. Everline Tribe needs just one bucket to win it. It's the first of 77. Braun dumps. Amundsen will go to the line. Makes one. What do you think? He made two? I think he'll make two. 27-year NBA veteran. Played for every team in the league plus six. Has a lot of gear. Played for the Vancouver Grizzlies <laughs> and the Memphis Grizzlies. Lou Amundsen's been... <laughs> if he makes them both, the game's over. Jab, little front of the rim, roll it in, do the Soft same thing, touch. and you move to Baltimore. Trip to the semifinal. As the on favorite the line. in the TBT, including overseas elite? Yes or no? Overseas Never elite is the, the favorite. Evans fighting for the rebound. ALS still alive and a reach in. Say what you want about the Elam ending, but it eliminates this right here that you're seeing from happening over and over and over again. The fouling, you, it just eliminates it. You got to play defense. You got to play offense. What is Eldridge doing? I know they want to deny where the ball, but why would you foul him? Get back and keep him in front. Next foul puts him in the bonus anyway. That's what I'm saying. You do not want to foul. You just want to keep it in front and contest a shot. Where? Tough. Evans with the board. That was like contesting a smaller player. Get a little quick drag screen here and let him go. Randall working on Smith for the win. It's blocked. Is it my imagination Randall playing with it too much right now? It's not your imagination. He definitely is. Now he hit a three earlier. But right here, pretty good by Jerry Smith because he had him on a side. Target score 77, so Everline Drive just one point away from it. They're going to bring Willie Reed back into the game. Worst team in the TBT their first year, they're going to go to the Final Four or the National Semifinal. They're shrinking that court. He's got nowhere to go. Randall got in the air. Pretty no whistle. Jerry Smith. Should be six seconds on the clock. There is no game clock, but there's still a shot clock. So Everline Drive will use a timeout. With a nine point lead and just one point away from hitting the target score in a trip to the national semifinal. Uh, Jerome Randall, former Pac-10 player of the year, had 14 at the half. He's got 28 now. This guy's been consistent every game. Came in averaging 24 a game. He, he is as good as advertised. He dominated this game. In fact, Seth said it, and I agree with it. He's the most valuable player in this tournament so far because you take him off, there is no backup point guard. There is nobody to replace him. 
And truthfully, even if they did have a backup point guard, the kid's irreplaceable anyway. He does everything. It's interesting because Everline Drive is without some key players. Donald Sloan's not here. Alex Kirk is in here. James Michael McAdoo not here. These guys, Everline Drive has done a great job of accumulating talent. I mean, you think about this. You're saying, and, and you're probably right, that they may be the favorite in the Final Four. Well, they're without guys. This is with a fairly skeleton crew for what they were supposed to have. What a job by these guys. Slump played two years in the NBA, right? Yeah, he's good with the Pacers. If he's overplaying, if he's overplaying, if he's not, stay space has got help. But this is a big screen. Bang, bang. You guys got this? So it'll hey, be Randall or Eldridge for the win. I know. He's coming off his bang, bang. One thing about this team, they, you can't get that much done in six seconds. First and foremost, you got to get the ball bounced. Get the ball to bounce to a guy who can make a play. I would think they're going to deny Randall the ball. Obviously, One Ron thing. is their best ball. It's going to be a quick zipper screen to a ball screen. Watch Randall coming off to Evans' screen, and then they're just going to step up and ball screen. There it is right there. Looking for Will Ridge in the corner. Randall taking himself off the window for the game winner. And Everline Drive, once the worst team in TBT, is headed to the national semifinal for the first time. Pretty cool, pretty cool the job those guys have done. It really, I think, embodies everything this tournament is about those guys. I, I do. You they know didn't... what? In the end, it's about acquiring talent. Good teams acquire talent. That's a talented team. They played well. They played unselfish. They had the best point guard in the game, and they had size. Game winner right there. A little shake, a little floater, because you know what little guards need? Need to be able to make layups, layups. big boy. If you can't make layups of different angles and heights, then you can't be a point guard at a really high level. And that kid is a point guard as good as there is not playing in the NBA. Five assists a game last year playing in Germany, former Pac-10 Player of the Year. And Jerome Randall leads Everline Drive to a trip to Baltimore in the national semifinal thanks to a 29-point effort. Twelve of those points coming from the free throw line. That's a dude who's getting it done, and Everline Drive has extended its bracket run, and they're going to Baltimore. Well, I tell you what, they, they, this team is good. This team is long, this team is athletic, obviously experienced with some pros, well coached. I think that Everline Drive against Team for Dent, it's, it's gonna be fun because Jordan Crawford, and Jerome Randall going at each other, two little guys, and then you've got Taylor Braun can guard Jimmy Fredette, and we'll see if he can guard Jimmy Fredette. Tell you what, next weekend is going to be an absolute blast. Thursday night semifinal, Everline Drive will be there, Jerome Randall will be there, Jen Hale will be there, she's standing by with the star of the game. Congratulations, you have got to be one exhausted man. How did you survive the run? The team challenge ALS went on at the end. They whittled down a 22-point lead. And we knew they was going to come back. I mean, like I said before, I know a lot of those guys, and they had unbelievable careers. And um, we knew they was going to fight back, but we just had to stick with it. Um, and it, it was a challenge, man. We, I, my, hat sauce, my hat goes off to those guys. Taylor Braun's defense is something special. He was all over them. Yeah, he was. Um, just coming out, you know, having the will to win, having the will to compete. Um, that's what, you know, this term is about, just coming out and compete. And I thought we did a great job with that. And for you, how did you put up 27 points? It was a, a supreme offensive effort. Um, i always been a guy that can score, man. I, <laughs> I just, I mean, just being small, you have to be a little crafty. You have to come out, you know, and just have heart. And, you know, it don't matter about your height. You know, as long as you can come out and compete. And I feel like I compete with the best. Yes, you do. We will see you in Baltimore. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Tom. Yeah, it, he doesn't let it stop him. I mean, some guys are better when they play with a chip on their shoulder, and uh, that's obviously Jerome Randall's deal. So here's what the semis look like Thursday night, 7 o'clock on ESPN Overseas Elite. They've never lost in this event. They got the Golden Eagles squad from Marquette. Those dudes can shoot it from behind the arc. Then Team Fredette got a big game from Jimmer, but not necessarily behind the arc. He a little bit of everything for him today, and they'll match up with Everline Drive. So a one seed, a three seed, a two seed, and a seven seed. As Everline Drive knocked off one of the ones today. We saw two number one seeds go down here tonight, starting with Scarlet and Gray. 
and now Team Challenge ALS. So what have we learned? What what do you need? What's the recipe for success in this thing? You know, it's interesting. Each team really has a different recipe. The Golden Eagles of Marquette made 23s today. There's your recipe. Overseas Elite is a team that can play any way you want to play. How you want to play, they'll play it. Jimmy Fredette is not a one-man team. They have a bunch of guys that can go get it done. Same with Everline Drive. Long and athletic. Four distinctly different teams playing for $2 million. And if you don't think these guys are thrilled, you're crazy because this means a ton to all of these guys. Everline Drive able to overcome the last-minute deflect defection of James Michael McAdoo. He said he will rejoin them in Baltimore. They will be there with a loaded team semifinals starting Thursday night on ESPN. What a weekend of basketball and what a couple of days of basketball still to come in Charm City. 72 teams started it, the single elimination tournament with two million on the line to the winners. So for Seth Greenberg and Dan Dockage, along with Jen Hale, I'm Tom Hart. What a day of basketball the entire weekend here in Atlanta. Everline Drive joins three others, Golden Eagles, Overseas Elite, and Team Fredette in Baltimore in the semifinals. So long from the A.